Hello, I am Puru Jena and I am a professor of physics at Virginia Commonwealth University. I was recently invited by the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters to write a perspective on clusters. In this video, I would like to introduce this article entitled Beyond the Periodic Table of Elements, the Role of Superatoms. I hope you will enjoy reading this article as much as I have enjoyed writing it. I will first define what I mean by a superatom and how it can serve not only as the building block of a three dimensional periodic table, but also guide us in the synthesis of novel and tailored materials that nature did not intend. We live in a material world and the mother of all materials is the periodic table of elements revealed by Mendeleev in 1869. This table is organized in terms of the periodic trend in the chemistry of atoms and serves as the building block of all matter known to man. Imagine that we can design and synthesize a cluster of atoms that mimics the chemistry of one of the atoms in the periodic table and we will call this specific cluster as a superatom. Imagine further that these superatoms are stable and will remain intact when assembled into a material. The properties of this new class of cluster assembly materials are expected to be very different from conventional atom assembly materials. In addition, the superatoms can be seen as the building blocks of a three dimensional periodic table. In this perspective article, I discuss the history of this field and point out the principles that can guide us in the design and synthesis of these superatoms. I also discuss some of the successes we have had and the challenge that remain. First, why should we expect the properties of cluster assembly materials to be any different from those where individual atoms are considered as the building block? Well, when atoms are assembled to form crystals, the energy levels of the valence electrons overlap and the resulting energy band structure determines the bulk properties. But the energy levels of clusters are very different from those of atoms. They are much more complex. So when clusters are assembled to make a material, this complex energy level structures will overlap to form a new set of energy bands and hence will give rise to properties that are very different from the assemb atom assembled material. A classic example of this concept is the C60 fullerene that consists of 60 atoms of carbon, carbon arranged in a soccer ball like structure. When you assemble these C60 fullerenes into a solid, the resulting crystal is very different in properties than graphite or diamond which where carbons are the building blocks of matter. So what we want to do is to devise a systematic way in which we use our fundamental understanding of clusters and their chemistry and find ways in which it will lead us to focus discovery of fullerene like clusters. The concept of designing superatoms and using this to build new materials and a three dimensional periodic table was actually discussed some 20 years ago by us here at Virginia Commonwealth University. Much work has since been done and the progress that has been made is what this article is all about. Central to this progress is the synergy between theory and experiment. Theory is used to predict the size and composition of clusters that mimic 
the chemistry of atoms. Experiments in the gas phase are carried out to validate the predictions made by theory. And finally, innovative ways are to be devised in which these super atoms can be assembled to make crystals. I will um, for this video concentrate on two examples. The first one involves uh, aluminum and hydrogen clusters. Now, borens are a class of boron hydrogen clusters that have been very known for a long, long time. Similar clusters have not been known for aluminum and hydrogen complexes. A few years ago, it was discovered that under certain circumstances, aluminum and hydrogen form similar structures to borane. An example of that one is aluminum 4H6 that contains four aluminum atoms and six hydrogen. This particular cluster is not only very stable in the mass spectrometry, but it also has very large homonomo gaps. So therefore, aluminum 4H6 might be an ideal building block of a new class of clusters where aluminum tetrahedra are the basic building units. Indeed, that was done two years later in hydrogen was replaced by, um, by, by another ligand. The second example that I will talk to you about is what is called super and hyperhalogens. These are a new class of molecules or clusters whose chemistry is very much similar to that of the atoms in the periodic table. Um, imagine you start with a metal atom with a certain valence. When the number of halogen atoms exceed the valence of the metal atom by one, then such a molecule will have very large electron affinity. These are called super halogens. And the electron affinity of these molecules can be as high as two to three times that of a halogen atom. Hyperhalogens, which was discovered recently, on the other hand, is where the metal atoms form a core, but the superhalogens that are the ligands that are attached to this metal atom. When the number of hyper, uh, the superhalogens exceed the metal valence by one, such a cluster will have electron affinity that is even larger than then of a superhalogen building block. And that is what we call hyperhalogens. Now, you may want to know what are these superhalogens and hyperhalogens are good for. And I will give you two examples, there are many more. The first one is that these superhalogens can be used to, um, to produce very novel chemistry. If you look at the chemistry of atoms, much of it is done by the valence electrons. The core electrons very seldom participate in chemical bonding. But if you have a ligand that can even attract core electrons in participating in chemical reactions, then the chemistry will change in a fundamental way. For example, take zinc. Zinc happens to be in plus 2 state of oxidation. If I can find a ligand in which zinc can be plus 3, then the d electrons are now participating in chemical reactions and hence zinc will have the properties of that of a tungsten metal atom. It can be magnetic. The second example that I would like to give you is that of a hyper salt. Salts are made by taking a cation and an anion. Super salts can be done the same way except the anions are now super halogens. Imagine I take a hyper halogen as an anion and find a cation, therefore I can make a hyper salt. And this has just been done by a group at Savannah River National Laboratory. And where they have taken potassium borohydride mixed with aluminum borohydride to make a hyper salt that is potassium aluminum borohydride. Aluminum borohydride, which is also on the left, is highly pyrophoric 
volatile liquid. It is very dangerous and difficult to handle. But when you make a hyper salt by using potassium as a cation and aluminum with four BH4 complexes that make it a hyperhalogen, then the resulting hyper salt is a solid at room temperature. So, this is what you can accomplish by simply changing the building blocks. Now, where do we go from here? Well, this I call the beginning of a new era in material science, where we can use artificially designed clusters of molecules as building blocks of matter. The challenges are to find these super atoms that mimic the chemistry not only of alkali atoms or halogens, but of other metals that are important in the periodic table, namely the transition metals and the rare earth metals. Once we find this super halogen, super atoms and their composition, then the idea will be how do we produce them in large enough, large enough quantities so that we can assemble them into bulk form. Thank you very much.